Hello and welcome to the craziest Brexit trading day ever. I mean, basically, this is what happens intraday. This is an hourly chart between June 9th and June 24th. Typically, in every any given day, it moves like you know maybe 10, 20, 25 points in a given day. In one day, it dropped from 2120 all the way below 2000. That's 120 points in the S&P 500. And just to give you perspective, if you look at the, the this is a, a daily chart of the index indexes. In one day, you got that big red, red candle zooming out. On the weekly chart, this is kind of like what we're we're looking at. This big drop from here, and it all happened in one day. If you look at the daily chart for the S and P 500, this is basically what it looks like. This drop from here all the way down here below the prior kind of correction drops back in in May. And if you look at the Nasdaq, that one's uh, even weaker, breaking also that May low. And then the Russell, Russell has been fairly strong, rebounded the most, um, but still a dramatic drop. Dow Jones, that's the kind of drop we're talking about. Now, in terms of currencies, the the British pound had a 9% decline, right? So the, the British pound went to the lowest in 30 years. And uh, so this is the, the big drop that happened in one day from 1.5. I mean, basically traveling to Europe right now, traveling to, to UK is actually good for Americans with the US dollar. Because right now, um, everything you used to, to, to pay $1.50 for one British pound. But now, now it costs a dollar, you know, 36. So, you know, each dollar, each US dollar, you can now buy so many more uh, British pounds. So everything's cheaper now. So that should encourage travel toward into the UK. Uh, not just not just the British pound, but also the euro. So right now the euro also dropped. Um, so it's, you know, not as much, maybe like like 2.26%. But the British pound is the one that drops like 9% intraday, closing at around close to 8%. So as the euro and British pound drop, people put their money in the U.S. dollar and Japan. Now the U.S. dollar goes up. People are like, "Oh, therefore the metals, gold and silver, must go down." Uh, no, actually, gold and silver popped up, especially gold. I expected silver to go more. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't go as much as I wanted it to. Um, even though it seems like silver has more catch up to play, gold really went ballistic. Um, I actually w said in our chat room that I see gold as a potential buying opportunity. Um, and there were some members who bought calls, made made a killing there. Um, uh, but really, a big trading day. Gold was up uh, at some point five, six, seven percent. Um, I think it closed around four point four three percent. But back to uh, Brexit trading. So wanted to uh, kind of go through this um, basically. You know, the final result is that they would leave the European Union with a 52% of the vote. The, the turnout for this vote was um, very, very strong. In, in fact, it was stronger than general elections um, dating back to 1992. So a lot of people actually participated this in this vote. Um, that said, there were a lot of people afterwards who were like, oh, I had no clue what I was voting for. I thought it was just for fun. And it turns out, you know, there's, there's actually lasting economic ramifications. We're not going to talk about the, the, the economic impact here. We're just going to talk about the trading impact um, the, and the trading um, implications for you. Um, uh, but before I get to that, I wanted to point out this is a this is a chart that I put that I brought up um, uh, on on May, May on Monday, six twentieth. So I'll include a link, but you can go to this link over here. But on that day, I posted this prediction chart, basically saying that it looks like we have an A, B, 1, 2, and we could have a 3. Um, and if there's no 4, 5, then it would drop. I was expecting that 3 to go somewhere around this 2095, 2100, 2105 region and potentially turn down. Um, compare that to what actually happens, basically this A corresponds with right here, A, B, one, two, and three kind of took a while, like we had two days of consolidation, and then finally the, the three happens, and three went higher than expected, um, but, and actually most of that happened after the close, right here is 4 p.m., that's 5 p.m., that's 6 p.m., you know, 
it, it wasn't until 6.30 that when it went up. So, like, all this green stuff that you see didn't even happen during the trading day. It happened after hours. Um, so, you know, this, this was a dramatic rise. And basically, everybody uh, was expecting, you know, the Brexit vote to be favoring uh, staying into the, the euro. You know, people were expecting UK to stay, but then the votes actually showed that they were favoring leaving the euro. So people were like, oh, holy crap. Well, what we expected is not actually true. It completely reversed, dropped all the way to 2089, 2085, I think, actually. Consolidated a bit and then dropped precipitously after that. And, you know, we had, a, you know, going through the trade of the week, we actually right right around here we were actually long a bull um a short a bull put spread um expecting the market to stay above 2035 which is spy 204 i had no clue that it would drop that much i mean i thought this would be just another one of those like economic events that the market just shrugs off um and as long as it stayed above 2035 and below 20 140 I think or 2130 then we would collect maximum profit I mean this is basically a bull put spread that I executed executed when uh, right here uh, this is when I executed the trade expecting the market to stay above this 2035 line and once it got to 2098 I did a bear call spread expecting the market to stay below this area so in in effect it was kind of like an iron condor though they have different uh, expiration dates but the whole idea is that the market would stay range bound um, after this uh, announcement and instead it went all the way down here um, it got close I mean it ended at 20 um, uh, well, I took the screenshot at 2028 20, it ended up going around 2020 but towards that end of the day it got pretty close um, but once I got some signal that we probably wouldn't work out uh, I took a small loss $120 loss there but I did make um, eight hundred dollars on the bear call spread that initiated the the day before. That one made us uh, eight hundred bucks. I also exited one third of the bull put spread um, on this day just in case because I wasn't sure um, if some crazy action would happen or not. So we cashed out about three hundred bucks there. So eight hundred plus that three hundred minus the uh, hundred twenty or or so. Um, I don't know. The, the net was around nine hundred dollars. Now, I talk about that bear, bear call spread. This is the bear call spread that we executed um, at $0.62. Cents. So basically, one of these guys is 62 bucks. So 10 of these guys would be 620 bucks, and 15 would be 50% more, which is around $900 as, an, as a maximum profit. Um, and we were shorting the 213 call um, in the SPY. Um, and just to tell you um, the risk-reward ratio, you look at this margin requirement of 4,500. That's basically your maximum loss. Your max profit is 945. So the, this this ratio is roughly five to one, um, a little bit less than that. And actually, that's considered a, a kind of a favorable ratio for a one week uh, weekly option trade, which is kind of like what we specialize here on the one week um, options. We want weekly results for maximum profit so next time you put on an option trade as a single transaction um, click the preview window and inside the initial margin it'll tell you like how much your maximum loss is and that maximum loss happens when the market goes above 12, 216 I mean going back to this chart 216 I mean I mean two 213 was what we, we shorted that's basically roughly 2130 216 is like all the way up here at 2160 so only if it gets there would you get your maximum loss of that 4500 uh, but as long as it stays below 2130 and above 2040 ish or 2035 ish then you would make maximum profit on on both sides in this case we only made money on the call side the put side we had to exit but actually the loss was not as bad as i was i was expecting um, and that's one of the benefits of these kind of uh, spread trades. If you get pretty close to that 2035, your loss is going to be, you know, fairly small. 
only it was I was getting nervous, you know, if the market opened at two thousand, um, and you're short the uh, the t- the two hundred four strike, then that would you know then that would be kind of bad, and you'd have kind of good you know a decent sized losses. Um, that's what you don't want. But if if the market expires near where um, where you shorted that strike, it's actually not too bad. So uh, this is the the bull put spread that we talked about in last week's video where uh, we did 15, we had a potential max profit of $1,500. And we talked about how that was elevated due to um, volatility. Uh, in the end, um, we only lost a small amount on this trade. Now, intraday, this is the announcement. Um, I could count a clear A, B, and then I guess this is this big drop would be, uh, a, really it's an A, B, one, two, three, four, five, but this drop was so big, and then it reversed, and then at that point I saw like an A B one two three four five. Well, A B one uh, no A B one two three, and then it went as it's r- rallying up. Where's where is it going to stop? Well, notice the top of here is roughly lined up with the bottom of this little spike down. You know, coincidence? I mean, that's usually where the fourth wave goes up. So right, so the fourth wave hits resistance here, turns back down. Now at this point, I'm th- I'm expecting like, you know, a fifth wave here, and then probably like a bounce up, but actually it goes down even further and then consolidates. It's not bouncing. So during this point, I'm like, wait, that's that's not a fifth anymore. That's a third, right? So that's an A B one two three, and this four is a triangle. And then once we break the low of this triangle, then you know there's like that that last five is a three, four, five. And that circuit um, breaker hit in 1999. I mean, going back after hours, I you know, I, I put that call spread and when it when it was going all the way to 2120 within two hours, I was like, crap, if if they if that vote actually um, goes to remain and this market just, you know, even continues rallying because of that, and it goes past that my my short strike of uh, two thirteen. Uh, that's like that's gonna be like a bad trade. Sure, the bull bull spread would would uh, make money, but then the call spread would would lose money, um, and then it started turning back down. And so I was like, oh, good. So that's you know good as long as it stays within this wide range of twenty thirty to like you know twenty twenty one thirty. Like like this, I had like a almost a 90 point range for the market to stay within for us to make money maximum profit on both the bull and the call call side on, on the both the put and the call side um so at this point i'm like okay it's good but then once it started going like in this area and consolidating and then pulling down i was like oh crap now i'm looking to like lose money on the bull side um but yeah cre- trading this was not easy this was this was a dramatic drop in just a short period of time. And, you know, below 2000, I mean, I showed you before, you know, on this S&P 500 daily chart, like how, what, what magnitude we're talking about. I mean, we spent months in this re- training range and in one, in, in like a couple hours, we went from here to here and it triggered a trading halt right here at 1999. Now here's where the magic happens. Like the best buying opportunity is after a trading halt, right? The trading halt is designed to prevent market participants from um, causing a market crash and giving them time to, to kind of digest what just happened. And this, it basically puts a floor, like like, like at, at, between this trading halt and the 9.30 open, the market just cannot go below 19.99. It just, they won't allow it. So when that happens, it's like, it's a no-brainer to, to buy. So like I bought right here and you know, I, I obviously as it goes up, I don't want to like um, end up, I don't know how high it's going to go. And I, you know, of course I want to take money. Plus it's overnight. I want to, I want to sleep. Uh, well, it, actually I pulled an all nighter. It was, it was crazy. I took mini naps, you know, I bought here, you know, went to, took a nap, like a 20 minute nap, woke up and sold some at 2015, um, bought some more here took another nap, sold at 2030, you know, went up here to 2040. And, and I noticed the top of A, that's, remember fourth wave, the top of fourth wave, this 2040 region, that's resistance. So I woke up again, I shorted here, 
and I covered um, I covered like 2030 and um, then I saw this kind of happen this, this pop a b one two three and then a pop or you could think of this as a b a b c then it started kind of going up so like I, I, I traded this like I basically scalped this and when it when it's moving this much each little scalp actually adds up to a lot um, so I definitely avoided big positions I only, I only did like one contract um, did not want to do more than that um, did that with the S&P 500 Nasdaq Russell um, but yeah it's like, when you lose you lose big so these wild swings you really gotta like enter with precision um, and that's where you know years and years of training and and working with these wave patterns helps me like on this bounce up I'm looking and once it gets to this level you need to exit right same thing happened here when it bounced here you want to exit um like say you say it bounced and you're short in here well it keeps going against you and you're down a lot and as long as it holds this level and turns back down then you're okay you don't you, that way if you knew that then you wouldn't cover at a loss at the top and that's actually one thing i did i shorted somewhere here it went against me but i held on because I knew that this would act as resistance, this uh, 2090 region. It actually t touched 2090, um, but good thing it didn't stay too long there and it started coming back down. Um, but these kind of details help you when it's massive kind of trading in both directions and being precise is very important. Now, during the market, the market opened, it rallied. Um, I thought long term it could be a, a good buying opportunity. I bought, I bought some like stocks from my retirement account and, and whatnot. Um, but what happened here, I did not really understand. I thought um, this, well, this looks like an AB mountain, the same thing that happened before the Brexit announcement. So this kind of ABC and then kind of like an ABC back down, um, the target being the bottom of this B wave. And if you go back, for example, um, kind of here right so you kind of like an a b one two three and it goes back down goes back to this baseline so you kind of like have this um kind of have like this baseline in the 2000 level where that halt was so in this kind of 2000 2010 2015 um anything between 2000 and 2020 that's kind of like this baseline and it's it's possible that this baseline doesn't hold but for now what i'm expecting is probably an abc um, probably a rally towards 2075-ish and then possibly turning back down and retesting the lows. Um, we'll see. Either that or, or, or something more bullish happens. So, uh, so looking at the daily chart prediction, um, you know, I had said along that this was either a 3, 4, 5 and then we get a wave 2 down, um, which usually goes below the bottom of wave 4. Or this is a one, and this is some kind of weird two, and this is like a one, two, one, two, three setup. Now, what happens when that three becomes a failed third? A failed third becomes a B wave, right? So an A B, and it turns turns around becomes a C wave. So we have an A B C um, wave two. It's an A B C wave two drop. Now my target was two thousand. I did not expect it to happen in a couple hours. Um, that totally blew me away I thought it would take like you know a couple weeks but it happened so fast and the thing is the target the minimum target has been reached um, it's possible that we get an A B C um, up to this region sell back down and retest this 1950 region before we begin the third wave up either that or we're coiling up for the third wave as we speak so it's one of those two possibilities that I'm considering at the moment but overall, this has been one of the craziest Brexit trading days ever. Um, if you had the guts to trade it, I uh, hope you did well. Um, but for most people, you know, thank God if you got out. Um, that that is a massive drop um, into an unexpected vote that turns the other way around. I do think that in a from a longer term perspective, it could be a good buy if you want. There are some stocks that you wanted to buy for the longer term. Um, those could be good buys. As you may know, we've been recommending uh, gold and silver, uh, both popped, especially gold. And gold had this kind of uh, A, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 4, 5, this A, B, 1, 2, 3 
and then just pop four, and then what was this? A B one two three four five. Like that's kind of like what I what I saw, um, and that's why I I said in our chat that there could be a potential buying opportunity in gold. Uh, the fact that it would go up this far that fast, I did not expect that. But that's uh, that's how metals move. Meanwhile, silver also went up, but uh, you know it, it did pull back from here from this spike up. Um, we're still holding silver futures, and oh, the, and by one thing is our silver futures are July contracts. Uh, some brokerages, like interactive brokers, they're going to automatically liquidate your July contracts um, if you're still holding it at the end of Monday. So so either Sunday night or Monday during the day before the close, we're going to have to roll over our July contract to the August contract. Uh, I've been waiting because the bid-ask spread in the August contract is kind of wide, and I want to kind of avoid like too much slippage, either that or I'll just exit and, and wait for another buying opportunity in, in silver. Uh, but but yeah, that's one of the weird things with like a silver contract. Even though it's June right now, like usually one month before the expiration date is where you need, when you need to liquidate it. So if you're trading this July uh, silver contract, then towards the end of June, you're going to have to exit that position. Well, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful to walk through the... Uh, crazy trading day and you can ex you can access uh, the iTunes podcast episode on on your phone you can go to the podcast app and search uh, trading lifestyle trading 101 and you can access the the blog um, article that I was just referencing right here and that'll bring you to this page um, that I was just uh, referencing Signing off, this is Silver Surfer, and best of luck training to you. May the waves be with you. See you guys next time.